Here we go again, more orchids. This time an unbagging and a box from Inse, plus a few other new orchids. First, I went to a Kern Orchids to exchange a gift card that Inse sent me as a thank you, or as he calls it, his revenge. And of course, when you visit an orchid nursery, you never leave empty handed, and I brought home some more extra orchids. The first ones out of the bag are a few I bought myself, and the ones that are packed I chose for Inces gift card. A few months ago I decided to cut down on my orchid collection and not to keep more than 100 plants. All good intentions and many of my plants have come to other orchid lovers, but in the end, despite all my good intentions, that ship has sailed and is gone again. So here's my haul and we'll take a closer look at them shortly. Changing my Cattleya collection for Paphiopedilum or Slipper Orchids seems to have been a very good choice because up until now all paths seem to be doing fine and several have already flowered for me. But first let's unpack the two orchids I bought within this gift card. Two orchids I never owned before so it may be a challenge. The first one, Miltonia and Warne, a primary hybrid of two species that should grow very vigorously and hopefully produces some flowers too under my care. It's a nice plant and it was the last one they had. And the second one, Maxillaria variabilis, the yellow flowered form. It's quite a beast and again a new one for me. It definitely needs a repot and my mind is grinding what I'm going to do with it. My first thought was to split it in half and put it in the pot with my recently mounted Maxillaria tenuifolia, but I don't think it will work because this one is a very fast grower, so I carefully have to think it through how to go on with this one. Hope you like my choices, Inse, and I can't thank you enough. And then the other orchids I brought home. First, three different varieties of Paphiopedilum insigne, a cool growing orchid species that grows semi-terrestrial or lithophytically. This one definitely needs a cooling down period in winter, otherwise it won't flower, so they will be a challenge for me. Again, these are well-grown divisions of Akern's mother plants, looking good as usual.
and another cool growing slipper orchid, Paphiopedilum filosum, variety boxali, forma atratum, a real mouthful and hopefully it'll give me a lot of flowers. And lastly, three large seedlings of Psychopsis crameriana. Although I got rid of all my Psychopsis last autumn, now I thought it was a good idea to get three practically identical young plants and start a project with them. And now to the second part, a surprise package from INSE again. Yay! More fresh sphagnum moss! And there seems to be more goodies in between too. Believe it or not, I'm very curious to see what he sent me. Yep, four more orchids. Let's take a closer look. These are two divisions of his own plants. A Gomesa or Ornithophora radicans, a really small oncidium like orchid with tiny 1 cm or 2 fifths of an inch flowers that often are slightly fragrant. and the division of his Pleurotalis ruscifolia. Now this one I don't know anything about. I've never grown any Pleurotalids, 
So Inse, you need to tell me how to pot it up or mount it, because I don't have a clue. And before I forget, this way of shipping small divisions in plastic bottles is really well thought through and I'll keep that in mind for the future. Now this miniature Brasia treasure I knew was coming because I asked him if he could get one for me when I saw it on his last supermarket orchid unpacking video. However, although I asked him to get one for me, he refused to let me pay for it. He's just too kind. It's been many years since I had a Brasia, but this one caught my eye because of its small size and flowers. Insta warned me that the root systems weren't that good, so let's take off the protective paper and see what we've got. And indeed, not really secure in the pot, but I can fix that until I've got the time to repot it. I just secure it with some fresh, tightly packed spagnum moss. I really like the flowers on this one. And this is a real surprise, Oncidium sweet sugar. I mentioned that I used to grow this one many many years ago, but gave it away because it became too large a plant. It's a very easy one to grow and care for, and mine was in bloom for at least 10 months a year. And now I was thinking of getting one again. But Inse, now I've got a surprise for you, so keep on watching. This certainly is a nice groom plant, but I suspect that there is more than one plant in that pot. We'll see when we repot it. Now Winston, look very carefully, here's my surprise. I had mentioned the same thing to a plant loving friend of mine and last weekend when he came to visit he brought me a sweet sugar. So now I instantly have a specimen plant for the future. Inse, 
I can't thank you enough for this. It's really, really appreciated. So, danke, danke, danke. And see you all later for some new and most likely orchid repotting videos that are coming up.